uh, we've already started uh, in the break. Uh, I have a, a kind of, uh, I had a kind of a theory about uh, what kind of community we are. Uh, so let's just start with this. Uh, on the front page of uh, monericon.com, uh, you can answer uh, three questions about uh, sort of thought experiment. First, the first one, known as the the, the trolley problem, which has become a popular meme on uh, social media, so you might have uh, recognized that. Uh, I think that this is uh, related to the thought process of uh, certain uh, crypto uh, projects which are uh, not really decentralized. So I'd like to ask your opinion about scenarios so, such as this one. Uh, the trolley problem, if you don't know it, is as follows. There's a tram, also known as trolley in uh, American, uh, out of control. It threatens to run over five people who are, which, who are tied to the track. Would you throw a switch that diverts the trolley to another track so that only one person is killed? I see this is uh, current uh, state status is uh, 15 times yes and 12 times no. Okay, that's a uh, nice number of answers. Uh, there are two more uh, questions, and I'm not sure how I switch, but I'll, uh, I'll uh, we'll look back at those later. And I'll uh, just start with my presentation. Uh, of course, I have to, I have to explain something first. Uh, why am I uh, advertising uh, Fiat? Uh, I'm not uh, supported by uh, Fiat, uh, the car company, nor by Heineken, uh, and they don't endorse my talk. Uh, but I really am a fan of uh, Fiat money, as I understand it. Uh, Monero is Fiat money. It's money because we say it is so. It's not really. Digital gold. Digital gold was a nice uh, metaphor in the beginning when Bitcoin started. Uh, I think Bitcoiners are taking it a bit too seriously. Uh, I really love the idea that anybody can make their own money and, and anybody else can decide whether they give value to it or not. Another thing is uh, I was inspired uh, to do this uh, when I bought uh, an Italian sports car which was the, basically the cheapest car I could find that had uh, cruise control, uh, which was a Fiat and clearly not a Ferrari. And we can say the same for Monero. It's a little rough around the edges, as you can see around you. We're not in a five-star hotel. We don't have a glitzy website. Uh, we're just uh, regular people who uh, try to do the, right thing, do the right thing and have some fun. and make uh, proper money. So uh, the third uh, reason for doing that, uh, which is very close to my heart, is the slogan of, uh, of the, philosoph the philosophy uh, which motivates, uh, I think, a lot of people who are into freedom and decentralization. Uh, and basically anyone who has any kind of uh, principles, whether it be religion or veganism or anarchy or uh, pacifism, uh, the slogan is uh, Fiat Justitia Periat Mundus in Latin, which means uh, let justice be done even if the world uh, perishes. This is, uh, of course, an exaggeration. I'm not saying that NATO should declare war to Russia or something. Uh, but it was, it was a slogan invented in the Middle Ages when it wasn't really possible to destroy the world, but uh, it was needed in many contexts to uh, make sure that uh, politics didn't interfere with justice. Okay, let's go on. Uh, I hope you can see my slides. I, uh, I made sure uh, to use a large font. Okay, here you I have a photo from uh, Lisbon, where they have their own trolley problems. <laughs> uh, you can see, read the title, The Consequences of Consequentialism. Uh, and yeah, I have to say one more thing about myself. Uh, this, this slide is really meant to be confusing. You can see some, yeah, some uh, collage from all kinds of shitcoins. 
Ethereum NFT's, Hogo Nickels, uh, proof of stake minting, and of course uh, my f personal favorite, uh, my Kcoin wallet. It's not for Photoshop. Uh, I, I really earned uh, 690,000 Kcoin. Uh, in other words, uh, I'm the least likely person to tell you that Monero is the best and that no one should use uh, and that uh, other coins have a reverse mentality. Uh, I'm also like to call myself uh, an, an old coin historian. I, I don't have really a training as historian, but I have been, uh, yeah, I, I, let's say I, uh, Monero is the only project or the only community I would work for, but I, I try to use everything else and I hope, uh, well, when, when crypto is dead, which is, which is happening soon, I guess, uh, I want to write uh, the history. Uh, so far, things were moving too fast uh, to do that. Uh, in other words, I always keep tell telling people uh, they shouldn't focus uh, on theory when we have empirical data. Uh, and uh, so today I'm going to do the opposite, and there's a good reason for that. The core question is, in the short history of cryptocurrencies, why were, were so many decisions made that were contrary to the spirit of decentralization? And those were not just uh, convenient decisions or uh, uh, not natural centralization either, uh, not even uh, straightforward scams, but, uh, well, uh, I think we can show an example. Uh, um, here, uh, we all know a lot of things uh, are wrong with Zcash or Zcash. Uh, uh, they had a trusted setup, they had a founder's reward. Uh, now they have a weird, uh, and, now, and they also have decentralization theater. Because they, you know, they uh, gave uh, the, the, uh, the electric coin company uh, shared their uh, trademark with uh, the, the Zcash Foundation and then they uh, invented some new tech and uh, they invented uh, a special license for it where uh, anyone who wants to use it has to ask permission. So there's a lot of wrong with the uh, Zcash approach and I, wonder, I wondered why would someone uh, like Suko uh, Wilcox who doesn't strike me as an evil person why would he uh, take such uh, consistently take the wrong approach? And he explained that uh, uh, he explained it himself uh, on the Seekers forum in April 2018. He wrote, "To me, it's never the right thing to enact a policy based on good intentions, sentiment, or ideology, unless you can determine that the consequences would be good." And he's uh, saying that uh, the Monero community is uh, going with good attention, sentiment, or ideology. Of course, he is uh, he is uh, making he's uh, yeah he's making he's making us look like a bunch of uh, hopeless romantics, uh, especially the thing about uh, sentiment. Uh, when it's of course uh, the ideology he has a problem with. Uh, otherwise. Uh, I do agree that we, uh, as Monero community, uh, don't, uh, focus on our, our ideology and don't don't let us don't let us distract don't don't let uh, certain consequences distract us from our goal. I, uh, I tweeted about that in uh, in, a in April later in April 2018, and uh, Zuko retweeted it. You can't see that now because he blocked me later. Uh, so I, I assume he agree with it. Uh, the, and I know uh, well. No one really uh, developed this thought, so uh, I'm going to do that now. We also uh, so we talked about consequences, Zuko, and uh, with another prominent person in crypto who uh, who is now who calls himself uh, explicitly a consequentialist or utilitarian. Uh, which is uh, 
let's say the, the trolley problem approach in philosophy, we will explain that later. Uh, Sam Bankman Fried was inspired by his mother Barbara Fried, who was one of the founders of uh, the effective altruism movement. Uh, effective altruism, altruism is an approach to uh, really do whatever it takes to uh, to do the maximum good for the world. And well, Sam just decided to, to become a billionaire. It's easier said than done, but he uh, eventually did it. He uh, decided to become a billionaire so, so, to, so that he could do the most good by giving his way his money. He found a train from Alameda Research, uh, which is also an investor these days, in the crypto exchange FTX. He's also a big supporter of uh, the Serum uh, centralized exchange. And he eventually he, uh, made the decision to uh, run that on the Solana blockchain and started uh, supporting the Solana ecosystem too. So, uh, I won't uh, go into details here, but everybody knows there are some uh, conflicts of interest here, uh, like Alameda trading on uh, their own exchange FTX, which is, uh, well, nobody knows if there is a both board, but it's a little fishy. And I think people tend to overlook that problem because it's all for the greater good. That's a story. And yeah, here's what I said earlier. Here's what I said earlier. Uh, uh, I added uh, Vitalik Buterin here too. Uh, I don't know what his uh, philosoph philosophical background is. I know he has some libertarian principles. Uh, but uh, I think Vitalik shows that uh, it's dangerous to have an open mind. You shouldn't have such an open mind that, that your brain falls out. And uh, so Ethereum is a bit of a complicated case, but I think it has uh, had uh, uh, a profound effect on crypto in general. Uh, so I will say uh, something more about that later. Uh, okay, let me explain the philosophy here. Uh, when you... When you uh, there are um, uh, many approaches about uh, deciding what is uh, a moral decision. Uh, but three of the major approaches are virtue ethics, which is focused on someone's character. And to be honest, th this is considered a philosophy because it was already popular in the ancient world. Uh, but it's, it's rather uh, subjective. I, I can't really analyze this in, in, a, in, a, in a short uh, talk. I will focus on uh, two other approaches. Uh, one, my favorite one, is uh, deontology. Uh, is the action moral according to general rules? Or consequentialism? Consequentialism. Are the consequences good or bad? And we can, oh yeah, we have uh, I found a popular meme. Uh, I had to censor it a bit. You see here, uh, it was about another topic. Uh, See here, it's funny that uh, Immanuel Kant is uh, on the side of the low IQ uh, curve here. Uh, he would say, you have a duty to keep a secret. Uh, Aristotle would agree with him. Do you really want to be a snitch? The one in the middle is Jeremy Bentham, uh, representing consequentialism, and especially the variant called utilitarianism. He would say, if telling a secret makes more people happy, you got to do it. Uh, so, uh, I will not dwell on virtue ethics. It is important. It does play a role in crypto. Personalities are important in our movement. But we try not to rely on people. And uh, we also know that uh, judging character is uh, not reliable because uh, there are a lot of scammers and fakers who uh, still have a large following. We, uh, yeah, we noticed some uh, popular traders uh, uh, fall down uh, recently, and of course we have uh, worse people. I uh, let's say maybe Craig Wright is the worst. I think that there are still some people following him. So uh, back to consequentialism. Uh, there are, uh, as I said, uh, several variants. Uh, just to pick a few. Uh, you can divide it into uh, 
uh, is it good or bad for, zijn, are the consequences good or bad for whom? Uh, the most popular approach is utilitarianism, which uh, analyzes uh, is it good or bad for the greatest number of people. Uh, you can also say is it good or bad for myself, that will be egoism, uh, for, for, or for others, altruism. So uh, I'm focusing on utilitarianism, uh, but the thing is, uh, this could al always be uh, this could always be an excuse for egoism, and I don't think it's useful to to, to be cynical. I don't think it's useful to uh, analyze people's motivations. You don't really uh, get anywhere doing that. I, I will I will take a charitable approach, and uh, I'll say that it's uh, that that can still have uh, bad consequences. Well, what makes consequentialism so attractive? Uh, uh, it's, a it's a rational approach, and we are all scientifically minded people, uh, especially if you're coders. So uh, it uh, also doesn't seem to require any shared norms. It's also convenient for crypto because it's an, uh, an, an international community. Uh, on the other hand, it does require shared values. You have to determine uh, what makes uh, the consequences good. And in general, it, it promises to create uh, a better world uh, on the surface. Uh, I think uh, that is a bit of a deception because uh, you don't really know what the consequences are. And it's dangerous to be uh, distracted from your uh, main principles, which will in the long term have uh, the... the, the the best effects on uh, improving the world. So uh, the trolley problem, uh, I already explained this one. We have uh, a nice uh, diagram from, uh, from Wikipedia. Uh, the choice is between uh, letting it happen that five people die or deciding to kill one person. So this is uh, a, a, th a thought experiment about uh, action or inaction and uh, this is I think one reason this became popular is uh, well I think it became popular as a meme because it, it's, it's absurd and it's extendable uh, I think consequentialists like it like it like this uh, example because it makes them look relatively good uh, but there are some problems with it uh, as I said, uh, the idea is that uh, there were people tied to the train tracks. So, uh, if you think a bit more, uh, why aren't we doing anything about that? Some uh, miscreant is tying people to, to the train tracks. That seems to be a bigger problem than uh, choosing which, uh, which person is going to die. So, I think there's a reason that the, the scenario is so absurd. But because the original uh, scenario was that uh, there were uh, workers walking on the track. And in that case, you could say, well, uh, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to throw the switch. Uh, by, by the way, I, I call the, these people trolley switches, which is, which is a bit of a, a poetic license. I think I don't think it's proper English, but, but, but I am a licensed poet. I'm a propist poet. I am allowed to do that. Uh, so, uh, a, a real, realistic scenario would involve uncertainty, and that's true when, in, in any uh, example which you're, uh, you're going to look at. Uh, and then uh, deciding on consequences is uh, suddenly going to be uh, a lot more complicated. Yeah, uh, I, th I mentioned the deontology, just a bit of a weird word. I don't think anyone. Uh, in Monero uh, is going to call themselves a deontologist, but we, we, we just can't say we have cypherpunk principles or, or something like that. Uh, it's derived from uh, deon, the Greek word for duty. Oh, okay, cool. it's, 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 it's a really stable app. I'm sorry, this gives the <laughs> wrong impression. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, why, why do we call? Why do I come talking about duty to a freedom-focused project? Uh, well, we're talking about self-imposed duty, uh, not duty from, uh, from authorities. And uh, one thing that's uh, pretty relaxed about it is uh, 
as con consequentialists uh, make themselves res responsible for creating a better world, uh, we're not going to do that. At least, you know, I don't know who you are, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do the right thing, create private, secure, and fungible money. And uh, I'm sure that will be the best uh, for the world in the end. But uh, we're not going to uh, uh, consider every immediate consequence. I have some examples uh, from that. Yeah, uh, I don't want to call it Monero chat because there's already a Twitter account called that. But uh, uh, I uh, have some, uh, I listed some objections from, uh, let's say, uh, people who are uh, with criticisms of crypto. Uh, for example, yeah, if you make private payments private for everyone, criminals could use them. And we say, yeah, well, yeah, okay. Uh, everybody uh, should be able to use it, and uh, this will have downsides like that. Uh, so, uh, other things are, uh, if addresses can't be changed, can't be traced, uh, some, some exchanges won't list it. Well, it's too bad. Uh, we're not going to... Uh, we're not going to uh, ruin our project uh, just so uh, we can get listed. Uh, also, say it's not a stable coin. The dollar value is volatile. Oh, you noticed that this week. Uh, yeah, there's uh, really nothing we can do that uh, without uh, introducing centralization. Uh, a very painful uh, uh, objection would be uh, if there's no pre pre mine, uh, developers will have to beg for money. And, well, we have uh, seen uh, problems with uh, Haveno this week, and we, uh, of course, we should uh, mention uh, the organizer of the, the first MoneroCon uh, had big financial problems, uh, which were related to MoneroCon and his uh, crowdfunding. But still, we think this is the best approach. Uh, we're not just going to... Uh, uh, keep some of the money uh, for ourselves uh, just so we uh, can pay uh, developers. And uh, there's the objection that uh, tax authorities uh, can't check, uh, you know, can't automatically check your wealth and income if, if your money is not in a bank account. I think, uh, well, uh, everybody here will uh, would just prefer to pay taxes voluntarily. And the last objection, uh, I phrase that as uh, you're using energy for an economic purpose. Uh, people will probably rephrase it as uh, you're boring the ocean. But uh, I think it's pretty simple. We shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't discriminate against the particular use of energy. If uh, something uh, spews carbon into the atmosphere or methane, we just, uh, should just, uh, it should just be taxed. And uh, I hope that the word tax isn't uh, controversial here. So I said uh, Ethereum uh, was a big problem because of the, the consequences on the, the general crypto atmosphere it had. Six years ago, uh, there was uh, the irregular sta state change after uh, the DAO was hacked. And I have to say, uh, the DAO, uh, it was a stupid name. It was already a stupid plan from the start before it was hacked. Uh, they just threw a, big, a lot of money on one big pile without any plan. And uh, with a convoluted way to, uh, to split money uh, if you disagreed with uh, decisions. And that was also one of the things that went wrong uh, that was exploited. So uh, someone uh, stole uh, 3.6 million ether. About a, third, about a third of the fund funds invested. And eventually, uh, Ethereum developers decided to hard fork the chain, give the investors the money back, and set the attackers' balances to zero. Uh, a common misconception is, is that they rolled back the chain, uh, but it was actually worse than that. They just, uh, they just changed their balances. So, uh, and uh, as I said, the uh, motivations were a bit complicated. It was really a confused time. Uh, people who, who actually did this uh, didn't have much time to, to, to argue. And 
uh, what I heard from community managers was uh, arguments that I would call consequentialism. Uh, for example, they said uh, professional investors wouldn't take us seriously when we let these thieves get away with it. Or they said, uh, we're going to switch the proof of stake soon, uh, which means the attacker uh, would have significant power. So here we see another example of the role of uncertainty, because uh, proof of stake is coming soon now, but it is six years later. This is why you shouldn't uh, pay too much uh, attention to uh, uh, your expectations of reality uh, when making a decision. Uh, there's even one uh, person involved with Ethereum, uh, Alex van der Sander, who was a designer and very involved with this process. He said, he said they were trolled into the hard, hard fork by someone who was pretending to be the, the attacker. It's very complicated, but they thought the attacker was uh, following the rescue process. Uh, but in fact, it was uh, a troll, uh, the, the guy who, uh, <laughs> who created chat roulette. <laughs> incredibly funny uh, when you look at it now. But, uh, and yeah, of course, my question is, uh, how can you be trolled into, into uh, betraying your basic principles? Because Ethereum, like Monero, was, was supposed to be uh, permissionless. It was supposed to be immutable. It was supposed to be uh, code as law. Uh, Unstoppable applications was your original promise. So, how do you get from there to being trolled into editing the blockchain? Uh, there were some arguments also about property rights, uh, which you might call somewhat principled. Uh, the most common argument was that it wouldn't be right to let the attacker get away with thefts at such a large scale. But that would open a can of worms. Uh, at which scale do we start editing the blockchain? This led to some discussions, uh, for example, when uh, uh, the Ethereum company Parity accidentally froze uh, millions, or millions of dollars worth of Ether. Uh, and unlike uh, EOS, uh, uh, this was not uh, allowed, in, this was not uh, the intention in, in Ethereum's original social contract to, uh, to, to make such drastic changes uh, in order to uh, uh, fight uh, certain theft. Also, uh, many of the people who lost money were Ethereum insiders. So, uh, as I said, uh, I don't want to specul speculate about people's motives, but of course there was there were big uh, risks of collusion here. So, what were the consequences for Ethereum? Uh, there was uh, the, the, the precedent that you could edit a blockchain that is still there. Uh, it was a traumatic experience for uh, that community and it was why I left and why I uh, came to Monero. Uh, and they didn't uh, do the same again on the, on the mainnet. Uh, but the precedent is still there, uh, and when it comes to apps or stablecoin, it's even considered uh, normal to, uh, to to freeze balances of, of, of exploiters or thieves. Uh, there was uh, recently uh, a case uh, of, the, of the Optimism Second, Rail, second Layer project, uh, where some uh, where a few millions were, uh, uh, yeah, how I said it, were uh, appro misappropriated. Uh, eventually, uh, the, 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 the exploiter uh, reached a deal with them, uh, but they, they said uh, they, they considered uh, a certain network upgrades to freeze those tokens, and, we, and then they said on Twitter, we will not take the step at this time. So that was a bit of a, well, a statement uh, which would make you worry. At which time would they, uh, would they take that step? But more in general, I think uh, it's not so much a precedent uh, which, which is damage, uh, but it's that, uh, that it made uh, the, the, the Ethereum community rudderless. And since much of the economic activity is on Ethereum, uh, that made uh, the crypto movement in general rudderless, without direction. 
No, if you have no, if you have no basic principles, how are you going to make big decisions? It's, a, it's philosophical, but it's really a tough practical problem. For example, there was uh, this uh, proposal uh, EIP one five five nine, which which started as as a really technical move to uh, to stabilize the transaction fee market. Uh, this required burning the base fee uh, because otherwise uh, miners uh, could exploit it in a certain way. So, uh, more or less accidentally, uh, Ethereum became uh, uh, almost deflationary. Well, it depends on uh, market circumstances, but it will probably become deflationary after proof of stake. So, uh, what we then saw was that uh, Ethereum influencers on, on, on Twitter uh, started uh, boasting about uh, ultrasound money. Suddenly they were, they were more interested in deflation and hard money than Bitcoiners. So then I think uh, if it's that easy to change your mind, uh, what will they come up next? What, what will they co come up with next? It's, it's unpredictable. And I think this has consequences for crypto in general. And uh, one thing I realized uh, while, uh, while writing this talk is that there's a problem with uh, the concept of decentralization in general. I mean, decentralization is, is important. Uh, it, it is, uh, it is uh, an important technology with which does give us uh, freedom. But uh, as an ideal, it's a uh, very weak, it's a, uh, it's a weak organizational ambition. Uh, decentralization used to be disruptive and uh, Satoshi, uh, came, Satoshi came up with a, with, a, with a way to realize it. But now it's become a vague organizational ambition. It, it's not a hard promise like uh, financial privacy, which is our promise basically. Uh, and uh, Web3 is even vaguer, you, you can, yeah. You can, can uh, catch anything under a number. Uh, and I think our way of dealing with that isn't productive either. Uh, when, you, when people from Monero or Bitcoin criticize smart, project, smart, smart contract projects for, being, uh, for not being decentralized, uh, you're, you're just sticking with the same narrative. Uh, you're, you're still uh, assuming that uh, Decentralization is the goal, and in a way it is, but it is not, uh, it's not an attractive ideal that will attract uh, new users to, to this technology. So I think we should uh, come up with something else, uh, whether it's freedom technology or uh, whatever. Uh, I think uh, uh, I don't uh, have an answer to that, uh, but I think we should do something about that. On the, on the other hand, uh, to end on a positive note, uh, I think uh, we can have a, a, a happy conclusion for Monero. Uh, this, uh, yeah, when we look at uh, crypto philosophically, it do, does look make us look uh, rel relatively good. Uh, what we learned is uh, unprincipled, unprincipled competitors aren't necessarily evil. Uh, we have opponents, uh, not enemies. And uh, also, we don't need to be toxic because there's, all, there, there, there's already a basic a fundamental difference in our way of thinking. Uh, so you don't need to uh, stress it by screaming or, uh, uh, or, or, or exaggerating. And uh, I think this... Uh, Looking at uh, uh, philosophy is uh, useful to avoid uh, getting dragged into debates about immediate consequences. Uh, I hope you, what, uh, what this talk uh, helps you do is when you uh, see a certain debate about, uh, which really goes into the weeds about uh, immediate consequences that you realize, hey, uh, we should take a broader view. So I hope, uh, can help with that. And uh, we, as Monero, already have a stronger ideal than decentralization. We could help the crypto community to uh, uh, to develop on too. 
and in general uh, we have a firm footing and a clear conscience so we can uh, look forward to a good future thank you